Now that we've found the total distance the ball travels, let's address question B. It asks, by how much will it clear the uprights, which stand three meters off the ground? So let's look back at our picture. Now, the position we found in part A, this final position of 57.86, doesn't really tell us anything about where it is when it crosses the uprights. What we really want in part B is we want to know something about the location along that path that is at the position that the uprights are at. This position of the uprights is our new final position. So we have a whole new XY table. We can keep the same initial position, which is at the start, but our final position changes. And the final position in the X for part B is going to be the location of the goalposts. And it's going to have a new final position in the Y. That'll be the elevation that the ball is at. And since we know that the goalposts are three meters from the ground, well, what we want is this distance, which is above the goalposts. And that's going to be equal to whatever we get for Y final minus the three meters that it's elevated. So let's look at this problem again. When we use these equations, these kinematic equations, we can find the location, the speed, the time at which an object is at any point along this path. So instead of finding the final position on the ground, we're just going to look for it when it's at an X position of 52 meters. So let's set up our XY table for part B. In the X direction, again, we have no acceleration in the X. You can always put a zero here or even leave it blank. You have some time to get to that new position at 52 meters. You're going to have a velocity in the X, and the initial velocities hasn't changed from part A. It's still kicked from the ground with a velocity of 24 at an angle, which means in the X direction, we're going 15.43 meters per second. It starts at a, the same initial position where it's kicked, except now the location we care about is the goalposts, which we are told are at a location of 52 meters. In the Y direction, Again, our acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our time is going to be the same time we get on the x side. Our initial velocity in the y is still the same initial velocity, 18.39 meters per second. Our y component of that velocity, 24 meters per second. Our final velocity in the y will be a new speed at that height. It's going to be zero here in the y at the peak. So it'll be a little bit negative once it gets there, but it won't be the full 18.39. And since the question doesn't ask anything about the speed that passes the uprights, then that's a value we really won't need to calculate. The initial position in the Y is still on the ground, and the final position is what we're trying to find. That's the location vertically it is when it passes the uprights. So in order to find Y final, if you look at your equations, you're probably looking at this first equation. Again, x can be replaced with y's. Uh, you could possibly do it uh, with the third equation, but we don't have v final in the y. So let's stick with equation number one. However, we don't have the time needed. However, when you look at the x direction, we have all, we have all the variables other than time. So our first step right now is going to find the time in the air using the x side. And in the x direction, we only have one equation because there's no acceleration. It's velocity of the x times time plus the initial position. So the final position is 52 meters. That equals the velocity in the x, 15.43, times time plus zero. And we plug it into our calculator. 52 divided by 15.43 is 3.37 seconds. That's going to be the time that it takes the ball to get to the uprights. And again, it bridges the gap to the Y side. And that makes sense because we found the total time to get all the way to the ground to be 3.75 seconds. So it should be a little less time to get to that position. And now that we have the time, the second step would be to find the final position in the Y using the Y side. And we have an equation for y final. It's 1 half a y t squared plus v initial in the y t plus y initial. 
And so y final is going to be 1 half of negative 9.8. The time we just calculated is 3.37, and we got to square that time. The initial velocity is 18.39. We'll multiply that by the same time. And plus the initial position we had on the ground. So I'm going to pull out my calculator, and I'm going to start typing away. 0. 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 3.37 squared plus the initial velocity, 18.39, times that time, 3.37, plus 0. And I get 6.32, we'll round up. Y final is 6.33 meters. And to answer the question, if you look back at our diagram, because we drew a picture, it's really helpful to see. If this total height is 6.63 meters from here to here, I believe that was the number we had. Sorry, 6.33. Then if you subtract the height of the goalpost, y final minus 3, we'll subtract 3 from there. That's the goalpost. Gives us an answer. of 3.33 meters above the goalpost. Hope this has been helpful in solving these types of problems. Thank you.